Hi, in this video we are going to be going over how to use the DSP oscilloscope utility in PSIM to control a uh, DSP and to display runtime variables. Um, the example that I'm going to be using is the same one that I used to introduce the example simulations for the ATI high voltage motor control development kit. Uh, this is the induction motor drive level 1 for the F28335 uh, C2000 processor. Uh, just a quick review. Uh, we can generate the code by going up to simulate, generate code, and then we can import that into CoComposer Studio. Um, I've already built the project to see how to do to bring the the project in. Please look at the the introductory video, uh, and we can see here the same timestamp. And uh, so that just gets automatically loaded in, and then we come and hit debug. And then once it starts debugging, we can start it from uh, from the watch window, and then we can control and start the simulation here. And we can see the PWMs now displayed in the uh, PicoScope window. Now there's another way to do this using the DSP oscilloscope in PSIM. And I'll set that up now. Let's stop that. Okay, so we don't need to use the CCS window anymore except to start the debug session. So let's get that out of the way. So we're going to set the simulation up now so that the start and stop variables are in this in this region of the DSP oscilloscope and that we can display some internal process variables so that they get displayed on the screen just like in a regular oscilloscope but we'll be probing the runtime variables of the DSP so to set up the SCI interface in PSIM there's a couple things that you can do in elements, simcoder, the f and uh, over to the specific target, the first block you really need to put down is the SCI configuration block. The SCI configuration block has a number of options. You can assign which port, uh, which pins will be the the SCI will communicate on the speed at which it communicates, there's going to be a parity check, and the output buffer size. I'll increase this buffer size to around 1200. The next thing we need to do is we need to highlight variables to pass back on the SCI interface. They can be process variables or they can be input variables. But they have to be inside of the DSP. So basically anything from the PWM in input side to the logic control circuit. So let's have a look at these voltages, TA, TB, and TC, which are the output voltages from the space factor generation. To do that, I'll delete these probes. And I'll place some SCI blocks. SCI output. I'll wire them up and we'll rejoin the video. So here we've got it wired up now. You can see that I've labeled them TATBTC to correspond with TATBTC. And we can open one up and see what's going on inside. So we can name it and that's going to be the name that we see in the DSP oscilloscope when we display the waveform and data point step. Data point step is the frequency at which the data is transmitted or sampled back across the SCI interface. Uh, if it's set to 1, every single data point collected will be passed. That might be a little too frequent for us, so let's just put do every third. Okay, and I can set up the start variable as either a SCI input 
or I can define it inside of the parameter file as a global IQO. So start VD testing, VQ testing, and speed ref have already been set up so that they'll be passed on the SE interface by using this definition in here. So I don't need to set up this SCI block like this. But if we did, we would just name it start here, give it an initial value, and replace it with the uh, grounded source there. OK, that's all set up. So let's go back to simulate and generate the code. Here we have the new timestamp. Hold down the watch, the uh, Code Composer Studio from my other monitor. We can see now, again, timestamps are matching. New code has just been uploaded in. Let's build the project. We'll see now that these variables are displaying an error. That's because they are uh, now being passed on the SE interface and are not accessible from the watch window. Let's get that out of the way. Go back to PSIM and open up the DSP oscilloscope utility. So I'm using a RS-232 to USB uh, translator. Uh, if you have an RS-232 port on your computer, you can just plug it straight in. But you'll have to know, uh, find which port is the, the correct port. I used the device manager window to see which one it was as I plugged and unplugged the uh, USB. Uh, baud rate needs to match the baud rate from the SCI configuration file here. And then we just need to go down and connect. So we've connected and we can see already that the input variables have shown up at the bottom there. So let's start and we can see now that the PicoScope is running. Uh, the PWM is on the PicoScope there. We can stop and we can see that they stop. Running again. So Let's look at some of these variables here. What does what does TA look like? Well, let's zoom in a little bit, and we can see that it is an accurate-looking waveform for what is described in the app note from Texas Instruments based on this uh, simulation. We can run it in continuous mode, or we can run in snapshot. And we can have a look at the other variables as well. There's TB. And there's TC. So now we can see what's going on there. We can look at the effect of these signals. So let's increase the amplitude of VD testing. quickly just turn off auto scale so we can see that effect again. So we can see that we can shift VD, QS, VD testing and we'll see the effect on the uh, on the on TA, TB, TC from the space vector uh, modulation generator. And we can see it again. We can change the speed reference, and we'll see this increase in frequency. And we can also decrease. So we can set this up to look at any variable inside of the DSB, um, and we can easily set it up to change all sorts of variables that are um, running and controlling the DSB itself. That's it for this video. I uh, hope you uh, have found it interesting and will check back often for, for more videos. And uh, thank you so much.